Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. A welcome to Dumb SEO Questions, episode 319. Each week uh, we meet here to answer the questions asked on the SEO Questions community on Google+, Plus for a while at least, uh, a couple of weeks more, um, and also the Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group. With us tonight, we have Masataki Wasa. Masataki is webmaster of wasaweb.net. He's also a Google product expert on the AdSense uh, community. Um, Tim Kappa, or, or Masataki, is based in Wimbledon in, in uh, the UK. And um, Tim Kappa is CEO of onlineownership.com. He's based in Corby, about 100 miles north of London. Uh, Tim is also a Google product expert in the Google My Business community. And Micah fisher Kirshner is uh, head of SEO for Turn River Capital. And it, but in, that's in the USA. Michael, uh, Micah is based in the USA on the west coast of um, uh, not, not too far from Silicon Valley. All right, uh, let's um, look at our first question tonight. Um, it was fairly contentious, r r aroused a, a few passions around the trap. Um, it's titled, uh, click-through ratio and other human interactions are not ranking signals. I almost changed that title, but I thought, well, I'll just let it go through as it is. Anyway, JLo uh, said uh, recently Gary Illies has made a statement that dwell time, CTR, click through ratio, and other human interactions are not ranking signals. Since we can assume those human in interactions are not ranking factors, I'm not sure if we can, uh, my question is why uh, so many pages will increase their ranking over time while their backlinks and content. Uh, remain the same. I mean, I know that Google needs time to pick up what content and backlinks a given page have, uh, but then it should stay uh, the similar ranking situation without ranking for significantly more words or position change if there is no major algorithm update related to that page, I suppose. For example, I had a, black, a blog post that ranked for about a, a thousands of keywords those keywords are ranked over time, generally increased within, within the last three months. And some of those keywords keep increasing their position and extra keywords are ranked six months after being published while backlinks and content remain unchanged. Since content and backlink uh, remain the same, I've lost that one, sorry about that, forget that sentence. Um, Google takes, uh, uh, oh, my hypothesis was because Google takes um, click-through ratio and dwell time into consideration. Those factors could be accumulated over time while backlinks and content remain the same. Now I know this hypothesis is likely wrong. I'm not so sure. So my question is for a given page, what um, ranking factors of the page will change over time to make the page rank better over time while, while content and backlinks remain the same. Just name a few will be helpful. Let me know your thoughts. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and that was from JLo. Yeah, I'm not surprised this roused <coughs> um, debates about this. Okay, uh, so there's a lot to kind of parse through with this. Um, I would be careful about, first off, I would be careful about interchanging the word signal with factor. Um, they have different meanings. Uh, I'd also be careful about kind of some of the assumptions of what is permanent versus temporary, or better put, uh, what's long-term versus short-term. Uh, all this goes together when you hear kind of statements by Google um, th that might not be entirely interpreted uh, properly. 
So, for example, let's let's you know, let's take short term, long term. We know that um, short term signals can uh, help boost pages for a very short time before the long term factors or the long term uh, factors come into play and, and put in a more permanent, relatively permanent situation of how a page ranks. Uh, and this goes back to kind of like. Uh, Google seeing a lot of people talking about something, linking to, not necessarily linking to it, um, but it's being referenced in places that uh, Google is aware of. We'll temporarily boost that up for kind of relevancy. Think kind of like news results is a good example of, of that kind of situation. Um, the factors, what is and isn't a factor, we've seen that. Um, Google does take into account kind of page one, page two in the past. That part's been fairly well established. Uh, there's now been links, leak, uh, kind of leaks you could essentially say about CTR from a from the the um, congressional inquiry. I think it was congressional inquiry uh, with CTR uh, talked about in there, or fundamentally what we would consider kind of some function of CTR. And um, I think. What gets complicated is whether or not that is a direct type of factor or something that they use as a signal for um, other things that can be used uh, together with other other things that other signals that can be merged together as a factor. Um, because once again, yes, in theory, CR can you know can be quite easily uh, in theory it can be fairly abused. Um, anyway, anyway, just kind of noting because that, that just backs up kind of starting from that to kind of point of what what things are static or can change over time. Um, so to your point, load time might be something that over time uh, is something that can become more and more uh, say as a factor mainly, maybe uh, as more sites could factor, Google looks at it and says, okay, we're going to try to um, push sites to be even more faster. Um, that may be the three second, say, three, five, or going from like whatever their cutoff is of like, let's say, 15 seconds, they may drop it down to 10 to 5, 3. Those are kind of things that might be changing over time. And that's not at all to say, which I think. Um, I don't think necessarily just content or backlinks are ever stable. I think that's always an ever-changing kind of how they factor, what kind of things go into that does change. How often and how in, how big of an impact does vary. Um, but I do think those things are, uh, are not, like I think it goes back to what you're trying to define as kind of more of a static doesn't change. I think it's more of like what are what you're looking for properly is more of uh, new factors or new things um, beyond just kind of we know that specific ways of content work. We know that backlinks kind of work. Um, and I think it just comes down to kind of what what are the new areas that Google has been been looking at. Um, and I think that's where something like load time is a fairly new one. Uh, relative to everything else, especially when it comes to now on the mobile end versus say on the desktop side, uh, I think just the fact that your your mobile site is for a lot of sites now are what are a factor is a big um, change in and of itself. Um, content that has once again used to be uh, on the desktop side, a lot of SEOs would be like take that content on the tabs, take them out of read more. It's don't get valued as much. It doesn't quite matter necessarily uh, on the mobile side uh, in the same way. So I think those are kind of interesting changes uh, to be aware of over time. And I think those are, I'm hoping that's kind of more what you're trying to go towards uh, with what I'm trying to give as an answer here. Thank you, Micah. Can we get uh, another comment? No? Okay. I, I thought we'd have um, passion and hand-waving. 
<laughs> All right. Um, let's um, move on um, to the next. Uh, let me see. There we are. This one from Zawa Kamal. Um, it's titled The Best Internal Linking Strategy. Um, he's, Zawa went on to ask uh, a very important on page SEO question or search engine optimization question. I have a service page and three blog posts linking to that uh, service page. Um, let's use an example here, and uh, he gives an example which can be seen on the uh, Dumb SEO Questions uh, Facebook group. Um, the service page is rehabilitation. The blog post, I'm not going to read those titles out. You can read them um, on the Facebook group. Um, he said, now all of these three blog posts are linking to the service page rehabilitation, uh, but these three blog posts are now in orphan content. Uh, although the, the three blog posts can be viewed from a blog page that I have, which lists all the blog posts. Now, what would be the best internal linking strategy that I can use to link these blog posts internally? Thanks. So, um, that strategy may vary uh, depending on size and to it and what kind of structure you, that you want. Um, Kevin Indig recently did an interesting kind of his little tipper model um, as one structure. I suggest taking a look. Uh, and by tipper, it's spelled T-I-P-R. Um, take a look at kind of how he views um, how the uh, one's kind of internal linking structure should be set up. I think in your case, what you're 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 looking at is how to build in a, in a uh, an architecture for your content. I think part of it just comes down to how are you, um, you know, an overarching theme. Are you going to be writing more versus just these? I think it was three. Um, and how are you going to be? combining it within the architecture of the whole site. Uh, normally, if it's just a few posts uh, like that, it's not the biggest thing in the world. You can just you know, find the section within each of the articles that then can link to the other, other pages. Um, and then themselves, if you've got a higher level rehabilitation page, that can always link up. Uh, whereas the rehabilitation page might talk briefly about said subject before linking down into the, the more detailed articles. Um, and I think in the end, what this is just getting at is kind of trying to find where is it relevant, how do you per showcase and have it useful, not just from a pure relevance standpoint, but also for users who are going to want to uh, find the right spot for where a user essentially is going to link that, or link, it's going to click down into um, your current article to find more about the topic of another article elsewhere on your site. So. That's, I think, kind of how I would be thinking thinking that through, at least at the start. Um, and hopefully that's, you know, close to what you're looking for. Thank you, Micah. Well, I also I'd like to point out uh, the forum stalwarts like uh, Michael Martinez. Uh, um, you can view on the... Uh, Dumb SEO Questions Facebook group, um, the thread, uh, the long thread that um, Michael and uh, Zoa uh, had on, on this uh, issue. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the contribution of these uh, guys uh, is uh, immense and, and we appreciate it very much. All right, um, let's. We'll call that covered and move on to the next, if I have no objections. Number three on our run list, another one from JLo. It's titled uh, Unrealistic Low Bounce Rate. JLo asks, what will happen if you track page view with a standard Google Analytics tracking code and tracking uh, events within uh, Google Tag Manager? Um, he said that recently I'm analyzing a website and found that it has an unrealistic low bounce rate. 
And I also found that they track their page view with standard uh, um, Google Analytics code while in Google Tag Manager. They didn't fire page view, but have a lot of event tracking. My hypothesis is that Google Tag Manager cannot tell uh, which events correlated to which session. So this might be something to do with the weird bounce rate, but I actually have no idea. So my question is, what will actually happen if you track page view with Google Analytics and the event with Google Tag Manager without firing the page view tag? Uh, let me know your thoughts. Thank you. Um, uh, GTM itself doesn't have any actual tracking. So what this sounds more like is you've got double tracking where you have the regular GA code and then the GA code inside of GTM. If that's the case, then yeah, you're gonna you're basically double tracking, uh, or uh, double tracking whether it's page views or events or goals, whatever it might be. Um, so I would be kind of worried about that. You want to be consistent, whether uh, for the most part, so that the GA tag is completely in GTM or completely outside of GTM. Um, so that that's really kind of one of the first things uh, looking at. Um, otherwise, oftentimes it might be what you're tracking. If you're doing uh, a, a, a kind of a goal or a type of event for something that auto loads, that's immediately going to basically shoot your bounce rate down to zero percent. So you want to be careful about what you're you're looking at um, as well. That might be affecting it. Those are kind of the two most common ones that I often will see. Thank you, Micah. All right, um, let's um, call this one covered and move um, to the next. All right, uh, Christopher Shin. Uh, ask the question titled advanced, it's titled an advanced and perhaps a dumb tech question. He said, a client of mine is using Java server pages for their dynamic showcasing of their website and the data is not being picked up at all by search engines, even with the metadata being implemented. I've not started on the auditing process yet, but um, we'll, we'll do it soon. Um, sorry about that, guys. Now, the question. Uh, do any modern websites still use uh, slash index slash JSP? The reason for asking is that uh, all of my tools are resulting in a 200 status code, but do not proceed any further outside the main uh, top-level domain. Uh, these sites' main TLD gets automatically redirected to an index uh, JSP page and also returns it to under status code, but no additional crawling afterward. It's baffling to see that nothing gets past that, no robots, text files, and neither do I see any web.xml. Uh, any thoughts? Yeah, I'm. I'm. Yeah, I, I don't see very many sites anymore on .jsp. Um, I'm not very familiar with the technical setup for that. Um, generally, things to be looking at is, uh, you know, if it's if it's being loaded through some kind of script, is it, um, you know, are, are you pre-rendering? Are you loading in the actual HTML through the DOM before kind of the Java starts pulling in because um, kind of matters how that structure is set up uh, in order to pr fully understand um, what the page is about. And, you can't, and putting everything in the JavaScript is going to create a lot of problems. Um, and without the proper setup for that, uh, those it's possible that those JSP pages are essentially going to be seen as blank. Um, and that might be the reason why. There might be also kind of broken, other broken scripts and situations with the URL structure. Um, but 
uh, yeah, it, without kind of seeing what it looks like offhand for myself, I don't, I, I, it's hard for me to go in and understand what's going on. Thank you, Marka. And uh, I think that covers that adequately. And again, we thank uh, Michael Martinez for his contribution. Um, here we are. Another one from JLo. Um, is there a way to do content grouping by landing page? Recently, uh, when I was doing content grouping using group using group using in rule definitions, it only provides options of grouping by page, page title, or screen name. However, I would like to group the content by landing pages, which means uh, only traffic uh, landing on pages with certain patterns will be registered in a content group. No idea what he's saying. Um, is there any new way to do this? Let me know if you have any thoughts. Thank you. I think he's talking about Google Analytics here. Um, there's, yes, I mean, I believe there is. Um, you In the ad, uh, admin, admin section, you can create content groups by URL, uh, like by like subdirectories or other, I think it can do regex. And then um, when you go into your actual reports, there'll be a cu like custom it, uh, a filter. I think it might actually add a, an additional dimension on the side, but you can at least generally add in um, the secondary dimension or some kind of dimension that uh, when you look to through the drop down, it will show up. Um, so I believe that's possible. Uh, I'm just not. I kind of vaguely know where that is, just not fully familiar. So. Yeah, okay. Now, now I get it. Thank you for that, Micah. No. All right. Anybody else? Okay, let's go on to number six. Um, this is from Moshi Mo. He said, I have a big problem with, with a criminal competitor. Um, yeah, I, I really should say that, um, you know, beating you on a Google rank is not a, a criminal act. Um, but, um, you know, usually you can define uh, um, every crook as anybody who ranks above you on any given results page. Anyway, um, uh, Moshimo said uh, he created uh, several years ago similar websites all pointing to his main website they're all weak uh, domain authority page authority websites but count over 1000 domains um, which allow him to rank number one and some of his other websites fill the search engine results pages uh, until page six seven or eight uh, how can i report his network to google uh, any ideas So, okay, yeah, not not criminal. I'm sure you're pissed, and I understand it's it's frustrating. Um, basically, I mean, in theory, if you think that what they're doing is against the Google guidelines, aka kind of a black hat strategy, um, <clears throat> there is uh, you can report that to someone uh, through Twitter. Um, I believe there there was a section, I think it's still there, um, about reporting kind of spammy links or spammy sites. Um, so I believe that's, um, yeah, just the Google spam report, which is coming in later on. So I think you can do that reporting over there and, and go through it. Success or concern or getting that through, that's, you know, it's a mixed bag um, if, if that will be seen to to do so, but that's kind of your remedy. Um, really, the quickest and easiest way is to get that person to publicly brag uh, that what they're doing and that they're knowingly violating Google. That's usually the quickest way to get them to actually do something. Um, or get a media uh, organization to report about it too. Those are usually the two ways. 
that uh, Google will actually respond really fast. Everything else just takes a while. Yeah. Uh, it, 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 you should have added the proviso if they care at all. <laughs> no, they don't care if they're pissed about if you publicly brag about it and people, and it gets picked up. Um, Google will slap you down in the same way as the media picks it up. Um, they will slap that site down. That that anything where you publicly embarrass Google, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna come after you. Um, so that that's that's essentially a, that's a given. That part will be done. If you're going through kind of the spam reports. Then, then it depends. Yep, cool. By the way, I, I was reading the the, um, the the comments on the thread um, uh, from the Dummy CR Questions um, Facebook group, and um, uh, he pointed out that the competitor is a known criminal in my city. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go to the next. This one from Joanna Jana Lasnica. The image is mine, but the description is Wikipedia's. Welcome to the new world. Um, Joanna said, how does this work? In the screenshot on the right, the image is my image from my website. However, the blurb is from Wikipedia beside my image. My site is not even listed on the first page, but that image is pointed to my site. So what, why are they pulling the image? How does Google pull this data? Yeah, this, this I'll be honest, this is thing, something that I find to be complete BS from Google. Um, I think the reasoning behind this is completely wrong. Their mentality is kind of what they think uh, works for Google News should work for Google Search. And I think that's Incorrect. I think it's. I think it's a misdirect for users where uh, the you clicking through an image or clicking on it because of an image, and that image not then being on the page is really a wrong and a bad user experience. Um, I, I yeah. I, I mean, it's it's basically the view that. Um, the image can help drive it, but that's not what people are looking for when they go to the page. Um, and that it's an understanding that the image is about a said subject of multiple news reports. But I think when a Google knowledge search or, or, or that type of box, you know, position zero comes up, I think it's a different mentality of how people click through. They see only one result. And they expect that image to be a part of said page because that's what drove them. And if they don't see it, 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 it's just wrong. And I think it's it's bad because it also can then make it look um, deceptive, uh, especially if the image is from like a competitor uh, until the image is of a of a different product versus the actual snippet. Oh, I've seen that, and it's it, it yeah, it's bad. So, in any case. Um, what what all that is in the end is um, it's great that you got the image. Now you want to work on seeing if you can fix Wikipedia, which may well be tough, but seeing if you can actually improve uh, a specific sub's content on that page so that your your snippet of content will, will rank in there in addition to your image. So take it in some ways as a nice little value that it's there and try to work towards getting replacing the Wikipedia content. Thank you, Micah. I think that's covered. Uh, anybody want to add to that? Fabian Peterson asked a question titled, Google shows uh, all of my blog pages, but none of the post. Fabian said, why does Google show all my blog pages, but none of the posts? Uh, even after making sure that all pages, including the post page, uh, have been crawled. He said the site is terrayana.com, T-E-R-R-A-Y-A-N-A. -A. 
Well, I see a couple of good answers um, there. One from yeah. Mina. I'll oh, go ahead, Micah. Sorry. Yeah, uh, no, uh, usually this is just you're not really linking to your blog post. Um, sometimes what will happen on the category pages will be such that the blog pages are listed at the top, and so people can, you know, people or the bot can see them, whereas like blog posts, you might get just what shows up on the homepage, and that's it. And if you only have five, and none of those blog uh, posts are linking to any other posts, and you don't have any other right rail links, footer links, nav links, or anything that links to all of the other blog posts, those will never, those will at some point drop out and it's just not very structured. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, I've just did a site query search. Of course, it doesn't show everything on the site query search anymore, but I can see uh, three blog posts appearing um, in the site query search. I don't know if you've got more, I'm not going to go into your site. Uh, but yeah, also, you know, as, as, Michael was just saying, you know, I mean, you've got, you've enabled tags. So basically once it's found categories, which by the way, you still got them listed as archives. You haven't updated the title on that. So, I mean, would someone actually click on that category in search if it says archives? Um, so you might want to edit that, but you know, once you've got, once you've assigned an article to a category and then assign multiple tags to it, you know, you've got all these pages where that, you know, it, Google's got to, so the point is you, you need to, you need to tidy this up. Um, Thank you, Tim. Uh, thank you, Micah. Is there anything to add to this one? Okay, this one is our last question for the, the night, I think. Um, KJ Subs asked the question, the fastest way to get my updated pages indexed by Google? See, Perry Bernard uh, said, uh, fetch this Google from Google Search Console. Yeah, fetch us Google um, and then submit as index page. Um, that's that's generally pretty fast. If you have it in your XML sitemaps, that helps. Put it on the home page or heavily, a page you know is going to be heavily crawled. Um, push it out to people around the web um, who are going to highlight it. But the quickest way on your end is just submit to Google Search Console and then get it have them fetch it and then submit it. Um, I think in the new version it's called inspect, get the page inspected and then uh, submit URL. So. Thank you, Micah. All right, so I, I think that's covered that and also that with the additional uh, responses from Perry Bernard and Tony McCreeth, uh, Adelaide's leading SEO. Um, all right, uh, let's um, click this. I, I'm fairly sure it's going to say thank you for watching, and it does. Um, and we, we do really thank you because your interest uh, in what we do makes uh, what we do worthwhile. Um, we'll be back uh, next week uh, to uh, do this uh, all again. Um, I thank uh, Masataki Wasa, Tim Kapper, and Micah Fisher Kirshner for their contributions tonight. Um, but for now, it's uh, good night until next week.